Hey man. Hey man. Do you remember last time when I asked you if you'd seen uh, The Mandalorian? How could I forget? Hey man, have you seen The Mandalorian yet? No, I haven't seen it, no. Yeah, well I just think that Star Wars in general is quite boring, overrated, and I just don't get the hype. What are you doing? You will like Star Wars! You will! Ah! We said no hitting! Well, I really think you should give the last one a try, the last one in the trilogy, uh, Rise of Skywalker. It's fantastic and it really gives you hope for like future films, and I definitely think you'll enjoy it. Nope. <sighs> fine. I'll get you a takeaway if you do it. Okay, fine. But it better be pizza, okay? Yeah, sure. Fine. Oh, you saw it. So what did you think? God, that was awful. I need to stop taking your advice. What? I just don't like Star Wars, okay? Oh, and uh, extra pepperoni on my pizza, please. Thanks! <sighs> Dude, you've got to stop showing up while I just come out of the loo. What are you playing at? You will pay for your lack of taste! <laughs> oh, Jesus, hang on a minute. You're actually doing this? When did you learn to do this? Oh yeah, I actually, I actually learned it last week. Yeah, there was some, uh, there was an advert going, so I thought, hey, why not learn it? Oh, oh really? Oh, nice one, man. Good, good for you. Good for you. No, your distractions mean nothing to me. Is everything okay? I will not be interrupted. <laughs> Idiots. Hey there guys, welcome to my channel, I am Blade Drummer, hope you're keeping safe and well, and I am back for a film review. You know what it is, Rise of Skywalker, let's do this! Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker was directed by J.J. Abrams and it was released in 2019. It starred a big cast including Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, Adam Driver, Carrie Fisher and of course Mark Hamill. When it's discovered that the evil Emperor Palpatine did not die at the hands of Darth Vader, the rebels must race against the clock to find out his whereabouts. Finn and Poe lead the resistance to put a stop to the First Order's plans to form a new empire, while Rey anticipates her inevitable confrontation with Kylo Ren. This is your first and only warning that this does contain heavy spoilers, and if you haven't seen it yet, go watch the film and then come back and watch this. Stop spoiling it, you vile woman! Rise of Skywalker to me, it felt like the third part of one of those creatures that you and two of your friends would draw, but you wouldn't know what the other one has drawn. So one of you would draw the head, the other one would draw the torso, and the other one would draw the legs. Their writers are just so out of touch of what makes Star Wars special, the real soul of the mythology, and it feels like they've started the trilogy too soon, without a plotted out story or competent writers. They have shamelessly trodden on sacred ground, without giving proper heed to the lore or mythos of the saga. The story has suffered from severe convenience, and it felt very much like Game of Thrones Season 8. There were objectives and plot points that had to be served to complete the goal of the movie. The young Obi-Wan and saving grace of the whole thing was, for me, Adam Driver who was excellent, and Kylo Ren had a really good arc. Daisy Ridley, who played Rey, had a script that showed that she is a very capable actress. The relationship to one another was very interesting and enjoyable at parts, but sometimes it was just plain stupid. Finn's growth from First Order deserter to joining the Rebels is largely glossed over. I was really curious as to how that was going to turn out when I first saw it, but you just forget it ever happened if it weren't for a literal few seconds of expository dialogue. The compelling themes of real people behind the stormtroopers, man versus machine, stolen and brainwashed children, all forgotten, just like that. Finn is reduced to a guy with a blaster, and also, he literally spends the whole film doing this. And this. And that's what his arc has been reduced down to. Also, the fact that he could sense that Rey was in danger is absolutely ridiculous, as he is in no way trained in the Force. No, Rey. He had a point where he thought him and Rey were about to die, 
and he said he wanted to tell her something that he's been keeping from her. And you never find out! I also wanted to say how ridiculously overpowered Rey is when she's barely trained at all. She can hold ships mid-air and just instantly heal anyone, even if they're about to die. She literally gives Kylo a mortal wound, but she puts her hand on him and she just heals him like it was nothing. It takes away any worry that someone could die because Rey can just heal them. Poe has forgotten the necessary lessons in humility and responsibility required of a good leader. Honestly, this needed to be two films, and they needed to be driven by character interactions as opposed to a constantly shifting plot landscape of sacred objects and hidden planets. Fans of character development, deep and moving thematic evolution, mythic storytelling, or even compelling dialogue won't leave feeling satisfied because the film spends too much time flashing to new sets and introducing new characters and animals for the Disney merch machine to bother. Perhaps the hardest pill to swallow is ending a nine film saga with no clear happy ending for any character, no sense of hope, happiness or promise. Sure there's peace at the end, but there's no purpose. We have no sense of where our characters are headed or the future of the galaxy. Only that a villain we all thought was dead when the movie started is still dead. Cool. Thanks for solving a problem no one thought we had and you never bothered explaining why we had it. Also for some reason, ships are now warp jumping to anywhere in the galaxy instantly. There's no hyperdrive malfunctions or creativity. It's just bland, just accept it happens now filmmaking. Basically, there is no feeling ever that the characters are truly struggling and won't make it out okay. Chewie is abducted for about 30 seconds. You just need to accept that they can do all of this now. Nearer to the end of the film, I found myself having more issues and asking more questions. One of them is when Ben goes to help out Rey fight Palpatine, but he is confronted by the Knights of Ren. Somehow Rey is able to force teleport a lightsaber to Ben to help him fight. I have no idea how we're able to do this because there is nothing that says you can force teleport anything. Anyway, that's not the point. The Knights of Ren are elite assassins, chosen specifically to replace the Praetorian Guard. So why, oh why, were they taken out like a bunch of untrained idiots? Ben Solo just took them all out at once without barely breaking a sweat. I didn't like it when Palpatine used Sith Lightning against the Resistance fleet, because it took out all their ships, but somehow the First Order ships were able to carry on flying around by as if they were immune to it, and I just thought that was stupid. Just in that moment where Ben and Ray were about to fight Palpatine and they both had their blue lightsabers and it's built up to this really cool and big event, Ben just gets taken out in about a couple of seconds and the, the whole build up towards it just gets flattened. When Ray dies and Ben gives his remaining life force to resurrect her, they have a kiss just beforehand and it was so unnecessary and unsubstantiated. Where did this come from and why did it happen? The blame cannot of course be aimed fully at director J.J. Abrams. His task was impossible, unenviable, and probably resulted in many sleepless nights. Ugh, so little sleep. Third night in a row. On a positive note, I can appreciate how much effort it takes by the developers and the CGI artists to do a film like this, because it looks fantastic. The effects and the CGI just all round look brilliant. But executives clearly got caught up in fitting in every single fan service gimmick and forgot how to tell a good story. Aside from it looking fantastic, there are a couple of positives I can say. The opening scene on Exegol looked really cool. Palpatine looked quite scary and so non-Disney, and I loved it. John Williams, as always, produces a brilliant score. And actually just Exegol in general, those huge statues, the operatic voices, it was so haunting and set up so well. Also, Leia's death and Chewbacca's reaction to it really punched me in the gut and it brought a tear to my eye. Unfortunately, the cons vastly outweigh the positives. It was riddled with continuity errors, as a contrived plot with many unearned moments. It moves at a breakneck pace. I don't even know if the movie spent more than two minutes in one place until about 20 minutes in, and it's constantly introducing MacGuffins to push the plot forward. So to sum up and to cut a long story short, it is a beautiful disaster. Four out of 10. Your power's a weak old man. Well, that's the end of my review. And you know what? If you enjoyed Rise of Skywalker, then good for you. Honestly, I'm really glad that you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the review, go and hit that like button as it's the best way to help me out. If you are new to the channel or you have yet to do so, go and hit that subscribe button because I've got plenty more reviews coming your way. But for now, guys, 
Take care of yourselves. And that is me, Youts.